Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations, how to calibrate your gas detector series. Today we are going to be looking at the McCurco CM-1 XLS carbon monoxide monitor. It's a little single gas unit. So let's get this started. It's got one button. Press right here. Press and hold it. And there we go. It's going to go through a startup process. So while it's doing that, let's take a look at the other stuff we need. So we've got a 0.5 liter per minute regulator. C10 fitting on the bottom, and it's a fixed flow, looks like that. And here we have our calibration adapter with a small length of tubing that came with it. We got some calibration gas. The gas for this monitor is 35 parts per million carbon monoxide, air balance. Uh, doesn't really matter if it's air or nitrogen balanced, but this one, usually you get an air balance on a non-reactive gas. So check our expiration date, we're good. Uh, January 2025, so it's January 2021 right now. And so we got our cylinder, and we're good to go. Let's get this uh, all prepared here while this is warming up. So first thing I want you to do is take your regulator, open it up like this. There's a space here where it could have room moisture in there, uh, just things we don't want to have mixing with our cylinder. So what we do is we open the valve, that way when you screw it in, the air shoots out as opposed to sticking inside there and potentially curling back into the cylinder. Uh, it doesn't really matter with a non-reactive gas like carbon monoxide, but it would matter if we had a cylinder with hydrogen sulfide in it or a sand before gas. So let's open that up. And I usually open it up, to, whenever I'm using a valve, I always open it up and then back it off a little bit. I, I have no idea why, it's just something that was taught to me by some of the old guys in the industry and it's just it's stuck with me, so passing it on to you. Alright, let's pop this into the cylinder, make sure we've got a good enough pressure so the valve's open. Screw it in, catch the threads, and what we're waiting for is we're waiting for a pop. And the pressure to go up. There we go, see it? Gauge went up. Now, now that we hear that, we can turn this off, just like so, and we're going to continue screwing it in. And you don't have to screw it in hard, uh, it's just once it hits the bottom, you're good. Don't, don't like crank it in. It's an O-ring seal, it's got a rubber gasket, so it's, uh, you don't have to over tighten it. In fact, that can screw things up. So, everything's closed up, let's grab our tubing, and let's put the tubing on. Sometimes this can be a pain with tubing. This stuff isn't that bad. It's pretty easy to get this on there. Uh, I'm going to go on past the first ring. Sometimes I'll go to the second barb. Uh, but you don't want to go past that. You don't want to like jam it all the way down on here. Uh, if you do, sometimes it's hard to get the tubing off. You'll be pulling at it, and it will tighten up on here. Uh, you just don't want to have to deal with that. So just put it on just enough so it's over there. That's good enough. Okay. So our monitor is reading zero now. Uh, everything looks good on it. Uh, sometimes you'll see it beep the word test down here. and that Usually that, that indicates that it hasn't been calibrated lately. So once you've calibrated it, that'll go away. So let's take this here. Got our calibration adapter hooked to our regulator, hooked up to the cylinder. So to calibrate it, this one, the way you do it is you press the button once and then you have to wait for it to come up with a screen saying calibration. So let's press the button once. It's going to put itself through a self-test mode. And again, if I didn't mention it before, this is for 35 part per million carbon monoxide. Okay, it comes up. It says Cal. Oh, and you see this? This is something that can happen here. If you miss your window, you, did, you didn't do it right. So you got to do it again. Now put it through its self-test. Blinks, good deal, we can see those. Let's press the cal button. Now it's saying zeros on the screen. So what this is doing is it's going through and it's setting the zero point for the unit. So we're making sure we're in nice, clean, fresh air right now. Okay, now it says span, yes, and it's a question. So we press the button again. It tells us it needs 35 part per million gas, which is what we have here. We verified it earlier. So open your, your regulator valve. And now, it's going to start recognizing the gas, so we're going to let this sit here. Okay, it wants to do a dance move. Pull that over there. Ah, 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 ah. Alright, I'm just going to hold this. There we go. 
So one thing to keep in mind, a uh, standard regulator for gas tank calibration, the most common one is a 0.5 liter per minute. And that's what we've got here. So this one takes about, I want to say about two minutes, three minutes. So we're going to be here a little bit. Uh, so all we do, I just want to remind everyone if uh, you're watching these, uh, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe or hit the like button or ask us a question in the comments if you've got something that some question you'd like to know about or anything anything gas related. Uh, it's always helpful when someone asks the question and then somebody else can get the answer too if someone's coming to the page. So what this is looking for is internally uh, it's reading the gas and it's it takes a little time for the sensor inside here to get up to read the full amount of gas. So they have what's called a T90 time in the industry. And what T90 is, is how long is it going to take until it recognizes 90% of the given value. Uh, so usually you'll use it as a signifier of how, how fast does your sensor react. Uh, you'll watch the OEMs, they'll brag about their T90 time for some sensors, or they might talk about a sensor that's very slow, like chlorine dioxide. They'll say something like, well, the T90 time on it is a, a minute, which is super long. Uh, you usually want to see your T90 times like you know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Uh, as quickly as possible is always the best. So what this is doing is it's actually doing the full calibration. So instead of just that T90 time, it takes it's taking it up to 100% or as close as it can get to. Uh, and that time scale, the closer you get to that 100%, the more it slows down. Uh, you hit a point of diminishing returns there. So what it's looking for, it's going to get this value over it, and it's waiting until that sensor response gets up there, and then it'll stabilize. And so that's why they, they're making it to be about two, three minutes. Uh, some gas detector manufacturers will take that T90 time and they'll, they have an algorithm they use that kind of determines when it's going to hit 100. And uh, this, this one takes a little bit longer, it doesn't, doesn't behave that same way. One of the things that's interesting about this is it has a bit of a lower cal point than most most gas monitors that we see that are single gas. 35 is a little low. Usually you see in the 50 to 100 part range, uh, just in general. And there's a reason for that, and that's when you're bumping and calibrating the monitor, uh, you want to be able to set the alarms off quickly. And when we get to the bump portion of this, uh, you'll, you'll see it takes a lot longer to get a solid bump and an alarm when you're going through it because the 35 part per million mark is also where they have the alarm limit set. So, perfect. So now that it's alarming, everything's that set, this is telling us that the calibration is passed. So, we're going to turn this off. And we're going to pop this hood, and we're going to let it go through. And we're going to let it clear the gas out. So then afterwards, I'm going to run you through a bump test, how we have to do that. And so we got a, a bit of an issue with this unit is that that bump test takes a lot longer using your calibration gas here. Usually, you'll want to use your cal gas cylinder that you use to calibrate the monitor to do your bump test. Uh, it's easier than buying a cylinder, an extra cylinder bump test. You don't like to have two of them. So, in this case, because this is 35 parts per million, and this monitor calibrates and has an alarm set point set at 35 parts per million, when you go to do your bump test, uh, what's going to happen is that you want to set it off so that you can see and get confirmation that all of the alarms are going off. That's what you need every day before you go out into the field because if something has happened with the alarm, let's say the vibrating alarm or the, maybe the horn has gotten clogged full of gunk, if you don't send that horn off at some point, if you don't send it into alarm, you don't know that. So that's what your check is doing at the beginning of each day with a bump test. You're verifying that this thing's going to go off and if you have a problem, it's going to save your life. Uh, if you that test, you don't want it to take a, a lot of time in the morning. You want it to, hey, put the gas on, set the monitor off. It should take about 20, 30 seconds or so. When you have to go the full span all the way up to 100% to set it off, what it means is that your bump test is now going to take two, three minutes. Uh, so I'm going to make a recommendation, and I'll, I'll walk you through why. 
uh, and it's that you should use instead of that use a different cylinder to bump test uh, if you have this unit rather than the 35 part per million. Uh, this is a 50 parter. This will this will do the job really quickly, uh, and, and I can show that difference. So at the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through that. So if you've got no interest in seeing it, you can probably uh, take off at this point. You've seen the calibration. I'm going to do the, the bump test with this cylinder to, to give you an example of how long it takes, and then I'll do one with this cylinder. That way you can see how, how much quicker it is with a faster cylinder. So, put that aside. All right, we're down to one part per million. This will get down to zero. It just takes a little while to eat up the gas. Uh, because we had it on there for so long, it saturated the cell. Uh, in, a, in a decent way there. So it's now it's just eating out those last part per millions. So what you'll see some manufacturers do, and McCurco doesn't do this, which I actually like, uh, when it gets down below, say, four, they have what's called a dead band. And what that dead band does is when it drops below three or four parts per million, it just automatically shows zero. Uh, and what they do is that way you as the user don't sit here going, oh, look, it's at one part per million still. There might be a problem with it. So they found by dead banding that people essentially paid less attention to this, which it's not a bad thing. This is this is absolutely normal for a sensor to take this long to eat up the last bits of gas. Uh, but what people as the users do when your guys get out there in the field is they they look at this and they start setting them off, and they then they're going to come ask you questions. So a lot of companies remove that. Uh, for accuracy purposes, I actually like this, but for getting out in the field and your guys being out there and questioning things that aren't actually an issue, you know, two, two parts per million of carbon monoxide isn't, isn't terrible, neither is one. Uh, it does help to have that dead band set up there for the efficiency in the field. Okay, so now we're down to zero again, so now it's, it's gotten all the way down. Oh, coming back up there. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do the bump test now, though, so that way we can show you. Just know that this will empty out eventually, and it'll stick at zero and stay just fine. All right, so let's do this bump test. So how to do a bump test? Take your no monitor in normal reading mode. Apply the calibration adapter. Turn your gas on. All the way open. Back it off. And now what we're going to do is we're waiting for this to set off the alarms. And if you look at the time, I'm looking at it right now, it's about 12 minutes and 30 seconds in. So we'll see about how long this takes to get a bump test full, fully done on the system here. And then I'll show you the time on it to do it with a, a uh, higher part per million of gas. So we're at 31, coming up qu decently quick here. So that's our, that's probably about our T90 right there. I'm not, I'm doing the math in my head, but consider that's probably close to that time. So you saw that went up pretty quick. That didn't take but, you know, about 20, 30 seconds. But now if you look at the readout, now you can see it's slowing down as it goes up. It's not going up as quickly. Thirty-four, getting closer. It's kind of that time. It's right on the edge, and I don't know. I can just imagine myself in the morning wanting to get to a job, and this thing just taking its time at thirty-four getting in sort of a staring contest with the monitor. Okay, we're at... Forty-five seconds now, nearing, nearing the full minute. And this is what's necessary every day before you go into the field. You, you need to bump test these monitors to make sure everything is right. So, When you look at the ISCA recommendations or any gas detector recommendations, everyone's going to recommend that to you, uh, that, that your guys bump test before they go into the field. So again, 
Uh, if you're looking to speed it up, you get a Makurko unit. I recommend getting a cylinder of 50 part per million carbon monoxide or 100 part per million carbon monoxide uh, just to bump the, th bump the unit, uh, just to make this process quicker. There we go. Okay, so time on that it was two minutes to get that bump test out of the way. Uh, you can see it finally got up there. So you, the the lights went off. The horn began to sound, uh, and I, I bumped it, which disturbed it. Uh, so wait for that to get back up there. But you can see the vibrating alarm was going off. I could hear it on my end, uh, the horn. So that's that's a successful bump test. So we could turn it off at that point. Let's turn this off, pop the hood here, and we're going to let it come down again. I'm going to show you what it's like with a 50 parter, how much quicker. Now, open it. So now I've got it. Open like that. All right, now let's throw it on. Wait for the ping. There it goes. A little smaller. All right, lock it up. Okay. Now I'm not going to wait for this to get all the way down to zero. I know that just slightly uh, modifies the test here, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'll let it get down to about one or two, and then we'll set it up. Well, I had an extra seconds of five seconds to the time just for argument's sake, right? Okay, that's long enough. Here we go. So this is with the 50 part mix. I'm checking the time here. There we go. So now we've already got our bump test done. Uh, it's time difference, that was under 30 seconds. And now it's a bump test complete. So uh, that's my recommendation there. Get a, get a 50 part cylinder uh, and use it just for bump testing these monitors and you'll be good to go. Much, much quicker in the morning. Okay, uh, if, if any of you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to give us a call. Phone number is 734-956-0539. Support email is support at idealcalibrations.com, and we're, uh, we're happy to answer any questions you have about any of the monitors. It doesn't have to be this one, uh, or just calibration gas in general. Happy to chat with you. Thank you much. Y'all stay safe out there.